Okay, 133, honors physics, electrostatics, problem number 26. Here, I have a diagram for this problem. It's an obvious point particle problem because that's all we have, our four point particles. So we're, we will be using these four equations over here in this diagram. And they're asking us in this problem for the electric field, electric field strength, which is this concept right here. So it's this equation, E equals KQ over R squared. And we're looking at a location in the center of the square that I've marked with the blue X. Once again, with a vector problem, draw this diagram and draw vector arrows. On scalar problems, do not draw arrows. In this case, we're asking for the field at that location due to these four point charges. Well, fields are always towards a positive, or I mean, sorry, away from a positive. So, for example, if we first look at this charge right here, the field for that charge will be away in this direction, out, outward, or outward this way, outward this way. I don't care about all these other directions that don't go through the blue X, but I could draw all those arrows going out that in those directions. But the one in particular is going this way, and if I just draw it right here, that black arrow represents the electric field from that upper right-hand corner. I'm going to call that E sub 1 in that direction. Well, from the lower left-hand corner, we have just the opposite. From this lower left-hand corner, we have outward this way. You can keep going and draw an arrow if you want to draw the arrow. But all we have to do is draw it locally at that blue X, so it would be like this, E sub 2. And you will see that if you're equidistant from those two spots, those two are going to be the same size, opposite direction. They're going to cancel out. Same thing, uh, same argument from the other two directions. The one in the lower right-hand corner, this guy will have a field that goes this way, but I'm showing it just for practice. These would be the four vector fields that will cancel out, and they're symmetrical, and that's why they'll cancel out. And then the final upper left-hand charge will have a field that goes down to the lower right, E sub 4. You don't need to calculate them, but if you did have to calculate them, it would look something like this. The each E field, all equal, so I could just say E, well, 1, 2, 3, and 4, but I'll just do number 1, equals, it'd be 9 times 10 to the 9th times the one individual charge, which is 5 micro. That's a 5. I'm trying to do a better job, better job on that. Microcoulombs divided by the distance. Now, uh, if the sides of a square are 30 centimeters, that means the diagonals are 30 times root 2, which I believe comes out to be 42 centimeters. You can check that. So the distance from a corner to the center would be half of the diagonal, so it be 21 centimeters, 0.21 meters. And that's not squared, though. I'm sorry, it is squared. That's kq over r squared. The equation up here I just plugged into, for every one of those black arrows, I would have that field. Didn't have to calculate them here, but just for practice, e sub 1 comes out to be 1.02, 1.02 times 10 to the 6th. 1.02 times 10 to the 6 would be mega. I can just say M for mega. Mega newtons per coulomb. Mega newtons per coulomb. 1.02 times 10 to the 6. 1 million 20 thousand newtons per coulomb. But those are all going to cancel. E sub 2, E sub 3, E sub 4, I'll be that. Symmetrical diagram, they cancel out. Net force, E net equals zero. All right, it's part A. But part B, it doesn't cancel out. I'll go to a new page, but we're still doing a point particle problem. So here's the new location. The middle midpoint of one of the sides. doesn't really matter which side. It's going to be the same on all four sides. And I did a computation for the distance from the upper corners because if you look at the bottom corners, for example, the lower left, the lower left charge right here, the field will be this way. So you can draw that like this, if I want to call that E sub 1. But you can already probably see that E sub 1 will be canceled out from the, the field from the lower right-hand corner, which will be E sub 2. Those will be equal and opposite. So we don't need to calculate those. I'm not going to calculate those this time. But I'm just showing you that those would be there, and they would cancel. Now, however, from those upper corners, you'll be lined up like the diagram on the right with that blue line, so I'm going to kind of eyeball it. So from the upper right-hand corner, drawing a straight line from that upper right-hand corner to the midpoint of that bottom side, that blue X. Actually, that, I should draw that one a little bit shorter, but I just want to draw it longer so you can see it. That would be lined up with this blue line you see over here. So it's lined up in that direction. 
And then we're going to have the same thing coming from the other corner down in the other direction. Actually, so I can call that E sub 3. And then from the upper right-hand corner, E sub 4. Once again, those would be a lot shorter than, than I'm drawing them if you draw them proportionally. But right now, I just want to get the directions involved because E sub 1 and E sub 2 cancel. But E sub 3 and E sub 4 will be equal in size. But they, they'll be canceling out left and right components, but they will be adding together in, the down, in their downward component. Let me show you that. Well, first of all, let's calculate them. So you're going to be using the basic point equation for electric fields. So E equals 9 times 10 to the 9th. That's K times the charge. Sorry. Times 5 micros divided by the distance squared, which turns out to be 34 centimeters according to my calculation over here on the right using the Pythagorean theorem. So 0.34, I'll say 0 0.34, squared. So that would be E3 and E4. I'll just call it E3 there for now. But E3 equals E4 magnitude-wise equals 390,000. 390,000. Newtons per coulomb. All right. So what you'll need to do now is find the components of each of those two vectors, and they're both the same. So E sub 3 is that 390,000 Newtons per coulomb. That it has a Y component, so I'm going to call that E sub Y. I can call it E sub 3 in the Y direction. And E sub 3X. Now, if I draw E sub 4, it'll be the same thing. It'll have a Y component and an X component. It's the same triangle, but going down and right. So we have E sub 4X. But E sub 4X, you can see, will cancel out with E sub uh, 3X. Then we have E sub 4Y, which will be the same magnitude as E sub 3Y, and they're both pointing down. And this is the 390,000. So I'm not going to need to calculate everything. Well, I'll be, when I calculate E sub 3, I'm basically calculating E sub 4. I do need to figure out the angles involved here. Now, the angle in the triangle down here, I'm going to call this theta, which would be this theta, which going to the upper right-hand square diagram, the geometry of the problem up above, that you could make a case that this is the same angle right here, theta. Let me highlight that. This angle right here is the theta we're talking about geometrically. That would match up with E sub 3. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to use the tangent of theta equals 15 over 30 to get that angle. I'm going to tell you how to finish this now. Once you have this angle, so you're going to know this angle from using the ge geometry of the upper right-hand diagram, you'll use probably cosine to figure out the y component, e sub 3, y. And that'll be half your answer because these two, these two right here, sum total give you the final answer for the total electric field, the E field, at that blue x, which is what we were supposed to do in part b. So basically the answer will be twice this number right here. And the direction will be perpendicular outward from that location. And then it would be the same on all four sides.